Hello everyone, my name is William and I'm a Stratasys application engineer for Go Engineer. Today I'm going to show you how to add a stabilized wall using the Fortis software Insight. A stabilized wall is basically a support wall that is designed to increase stability in tall, thin parts. More stability in your parts can improve surface finish by reducing vibration and preventing shifting. For example, I have this part here that's considered tall, since it is about 11 inches in Z, as you can see here. So I'm going to go ahead and slice this part. And I'm also going to add support. And as you can see, there is in fact some support on this part. And technically, it doesn't need any more because there are no other overhangs. But if we wanted to make this part more stable and minimize vibration, we can add a stabilized wall. So to create a stabilized wall, we need to go to the Support tab, click Stabilize Wall. Now notice there's a few features associated with creating a stabilized wall. And we're going to go over each of these settings in a moment. But first, we need to make sure that we're on the layer that we want the wall to start on. For example, I want my wall to start at the top layer. So I'm going to hit the Home key to make sure I'm at the top layer. And this is where the wall is going to start, and it's going to go all the way to the bottom of the part. OK, so creating the outline of your wall is pretty simple. First, you need to select your first point. After that, you hit the plus sign. Then you can select your second point and hit the green check mark. Now notice how you have a stabilized wall now. And I'm going to rotate this a little bit just so you get an idea of what the stabilized wall looks like. And I'm also going to add tool paths so you can see what the wall looks like in relation to the part. And for that, I'm going to go to top view and I'm going go to the top layer. And I'm also going to shade my tool paths so you can see what's going on. And as you can see, it's just one tool path, not a solid wall. Also, as I page down, you notice that it's touching the model at an interval. This is what keeps your model stable during a build. OK, let's go to the top layer here so I can go over each of the stabilized wall settings. The separation is the distance from this curve all the way to the back of the wall. And I'm going to remove tool paths so you can see this more clear. And I'm going to go back to the stabilized wall settings. And notice how the separation says 2 inches. So that means from here to here, it's 2 inches. If I change this value to 1 inch, you'll notice that my wall is going to change. Notice how the separation is now 1 inch. The next setting is the contact interval, and it refers to these areas here that are referred to as contact fingers. Notice how it's set at 2 inches. So basically, there's supposed to be an offset of 2 inches from each contact finger. However, if you notice, this curve here isn't exactly 4 inches wide. So the software rounds it down and splits it up equally. So if I delete the wall and modify the distance here, you will see a difference in the wall. Notice how now there's more contact fingers. The next setting is penetration. This refers to the distance that the contact fingers intersect the model. Currently, the penetration is set at 5 thou. So I generally leave this as is because you don't need to penetrate the model that much. The last setting is layer interval. This refers to the interval of layers that intersect the model, as you can see here. It's currently set at 10, so that means that every 10 layers, the wall is going to intersect the model. If I change this value to 20, and I recreate my wall, you'll notice that it's going to intersect at every 20 layers now. And I'm going to go to side view here so you can see that now it's intersecting at every 20 layers. Now remember, the more frequently the wall intersects the model, the more stability it adds. However, you don't want to intersect on every layer because that's unnecessary. Okay, the last thing I want to cover is the flat back option here. This can be used to make the structure of your stabilized wall stronger. So let's go to the top layer here. And notice how the wall is divided into sections based on the contact fingers. 
the flat back option is going to add an extra tool path here connecting these sections to make the back side of the wall flat. So let's recreate the wall using this feature so you can see what it looks like. And as you can see, the back side is now flat. And I'm going to add tool paths so you can see the sections are connected. And you can see the flat back there. Okay guys, that's the end of my tutorial. Thanks for watching.